Hi, I'm Mike Saylor. This is my lab in the chemistry department here at UC San Diego. And I want to talk to you about a few types of things that you might find in the home today uh, that use, are used as sensors. And uh, a lot of times you can think of things as physical sensors like an accelerometer in your car that causes your, your airbags to inflate when you, you hit a brick wall. Uh, what we're going to talk about today are chemical sensors. And there's really two kinds of ways that people can measure chemicals. Uh, chemicals might be gases in the air that you're breathing. Uh, carbon monoxide, for instance, I'm going to show you an example of a carbon monoxide sensor in a second here. Uh, and they make two types of measurements. One is an electrical measurement, and the other type would be an optical measurement. And uh, a simple electrical measurement can be made using a device uh, referred to as a voltmeter or a conductivity meter. This is a little... Uh, what's called a multimeter that you can purchase at an uh, electronic store for under $20. And if you set this thing up to measure resistance, uh, I can then touch the two leads from this, the probes on this device and measure resistance of my skin. Right now I'm getting about 500 uh, kilo-ohm resistance on my skin. What this device is measuring is conductivity or electric current running through my body uh, when I touch the two leads with my fingers. Uh, this is a simple device, but it's actually a device that's used in lie detector tests. Uh, one of the, the standard polygraph methods of detecting somebody lying is to detect whether they're sweating. If they get nervous, they'll start perspiring. And that water in the skin is a, has a higher conductivity than just the skin when it's dry. And so by touching these leads to somebody's uh, body in the right spots, if they start sweating, you can see a decrease in the uh, resistance value here or an increase in the conductivity. And so that's an example of an electrical measurement that can be used to do a sensing. In that case, sensing whether somebody's telling the truth or not. It's a very difficult measurement to make and often subject to a lot of controversy. A more straightforward measurement is just measuring that water. And so you can do that uh, in, a, in a simple fashion by attaching uh, these leads to a smaller device that might be able to measure conductivity of water. But now unlike trying to make the conductivity measurement in my body, I'm going to do it on this little device. Uh, this device here is something you can also buy at a small electronics shop. It's, it's called a capacitor. It's a little set of two metal plates that are very closely spaced, and they're sealed in this uh, ceramic package. And what I've done with this particular capacitor here is I've clipped the top off, and so those two metal plates are exposed. And now, uh, if water gets onto the surface of these plates, the conductivity between these two plates will increase. And so very similar to how the conductivity measurement or the lie detector test measurement measures conductivity of my body, this now will measure the conductivity between these two plates. But because the plates are spaced so closely together, even a very small amount of water getting onto these plates will cause an increase in the conductivity uh, between the two uh, plates. And so, for instance, you can take something like this and breathe on it. And in so doing, the conductivity will, will, will jump. And the reason the conductivity jumps is my breath has water vapor in it, and the water vapor condenses on the film on the surface of these two plates, and then we see a change in that conductivity. So what we've just demonstrated here is a very simple measurement also determining water, but in this case, measuring water vapor. And so this is a very simple thing that you could use in your home to measure humidity. Um, you could also take the same device if you wanted to and dip it in a little beaker of water and just like we were measuring conductivity changes in my body, uh, when this thing touches water, you can make a simple detector that will change conductivity based on being immersed in liquid water, and that you could then use as, say, a, a sensor for whether there was a flood in a basement. There are other kinds of gases that you can sense, and there's another type of a technology that can be used. As I mentioned earlier, besides making an electrical measurement, we might be able to make uh, an optical measurement. This is a, a carbon monoxide detector that you can buy commercially. And you put this, take this at home and plug it in. And after a few minutes, when it warms itself up, it'll start measuring uh, whether there's any carbon monoxide in the air uh, in your home or in your garage or in a, in a parking structure. Um, the heart of that technique and that sensor is a, a little device, a little, little material uh, that has some chemicals in it. And the chemicals in these little beads will change colors uh, whether, based on whether they see carbon monoxide or not. And so I'm going to do a, little, a very simple experiment here where we can take a, take a beaker. I'm going to flip it upside down. I've got a little lighter here. And uh, when I light that up, if I put it into the, uh, the mouth of the beaker and I kind of 
inhibit the burn rate so that it's burning very inefficiently. This beaker is now filling with carbon monoxide, very much like if your furnace is burning inefficiently, it might be spitting carbon monoxide into your house. Now how these sensors work then is they take, they have a little bead of this material and when they see the carbon monoxide, you see I'm going to place this inside the beaker here. And after it sits there for a few minutes, you'll, you'll notice it starts out life as sort of a yellowish orange color. When it's been sitting inside the carbon monoxide for some time, it will eventually turn black. A little simple optical measurement is being made inside the box that measures how much light is getting through that little bead and it measures whether it turns black or not. What we do in my lab is try to develop more complicated ways of, uh, of, of sensing based on these electrical or optical measurements that I've just described. Why do we want to make them more complicated? Well, we make them more complicated because we want these things to be able to see molecules that you can't see with conventional techniques. For instance, this water vapor sensor is great if you want to detect water, but it's not really good if you want to do something like a, a nerve agent, sarin gas, for instance, or if you want to look for an explosive or something like that. And so then we have to get more complicated, more clever with the devices uh, that we use. But basically, we're doing the same kind of detection, uh, measuring an optical change, a color change. This is an example of one in our lab that we developed. Uh, this is a silicon chip that's got a, a film on it that changes color when it sees in this case, hydrocarbon gases, so volatile organic compounds that, you know, when you pump gasoline at the gas pump, you're smelling something that's probably not very good for you. There are chemicals in those gasoline that can be neural toxins, they can cause cancer. Uh, that's why they have the little warning signs on those things. And so we're developing sensors that can be able to detect those things in the environment and out in the atmosphere. What I've done today is shown you a couple of examples of optical and electrical measurements that are used to make uh, sensors for mostly for gases but also for liquids. And uh, if you can go to your store and pick up a multimeter, you're, you'll be able to make these uh, conductivity measurements either in your skin, the lie detector test, or in a plant maybe to see if there's enough water left or you need to water your plant soon, making the conductivity measurement in water. An example of this capacitor measurement that we did uh, where we cut this thing up and, and made this conductivity measurement to measure the humidity on my breath is, is a little bit more elaborate version of that is on our website. You can go there and, and get some more detailed description of how to build that device and how to build the electronics for it.